questions? Thank you very much. Thanks to Public Works for fixing our eagle. First time I noticed that it's been uh, replaced. It was kind of uh, messed up a few months ago. And whoever did that in the last month or so, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is our regular meeting uh, of August 5th of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we have a couple of few pro form items first, and the first item is to consider our regular minutes from the meeting of July 15th, which are in our packet. Uh, so I'll ask a motion for approval. Second. A uh, motion by Sherry. Second Seconded by Ralph. Uh, any questions, comments, corrections? No. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm abstained, but I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, passes two with one abstention. Um, thank you very much. Um, just as an aside, you know, Ralph did miss the last minute. We welcome you back today. Thank you. And it's, it's good to be around. A few weeks and just, well, you know, uh, well, they don't give me chemo every every uh, every week on the flight trip. Well, we've been wishing you That's my week off. And, uh, we've been having phone conversations, and Ralph was able to help us both save money for the bond refinancing last <laughs> week, and it's great to see him there. But uh, you're a strong man, and you've been doing great. And we uh, expect you to keep it up. Sure. We know you will. We know that you're going to do well. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, back to our agenda. The next item is um, consideration of the tax collector refunds. And um, and that's in our folder here that shows looking through miscellaneous refunds. I guess I'd make a motion to approve those. Looks like a short list this time. I'll second the motion. No, you, I stopped you from making a motion. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll second it. Good. All right, seconded by Sherry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we did have one resignation. Uh, Dean Goggle, I don't know if you, if you remember Dean. He's, he's, joined the pension board about a year and a half ago, a young fellow, but his work assignment in the city was making it hard for him to get back for the meetings, so uh, he apologized, but he indicated he had to step down um, uh, from the employee retirement board. So we can move on to uh, item number five, which is to consider a few appointments. Um, there is one, uh, if you remember the employee retirement board, the first selectman makes the appointments, and then has them considered and confirmed by the RTM, so I do want to let you know. Um, I've asked uh, Jean Sturgis, who has had many town roles over the years, she's an accountant by training, uh, to uh, yeah, yeah, she's, she's a 20-year accountant, uh, to see if she'd serve on the, uh, on the retirement board. She said she'd be very interested in doing so, um, so I'm forwarding that nomination to the RTM, but it doesn't need board selectment approval, but I just want to let you, let you all know about that. Um, there still is one other vacancy on that board, and I'm actually seeking out if there's anybody out there who's a finance guru, uh, seeking out one more person. Uh, Paul and I actually have been making a few calls to people in the uh, money management business to attract another good person, but I just wanted to mention that to you. Uh, the item that would be before the RT, before the selectmen, is 5B, uh, which is a golf commission appointment, and I guess um, um, I'll ask Sherry to introduce this one if you don't mind. Person I who sent her resume in, who I recommend is Tammy Peterson. She's here. She's a bookkeeper Hi, extraordinaire. Welcome. welcome. Well, you could have been on the pension board too. And a golfer. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the meeting. And Thank a golfer you. and um, very sensible and the perfect person for this. And I'd be happy to second that for discussion and approval. Um, Tammy's bio is in our packet here, and I guess I'll open to the board if you have any questions or comments on this one. Now, as long as, they, as long as they play golf, it's great. Yeah. It's the only qualification you need. I didn't say, wow, I play. <laughs> but I'll join the rest of this. You know? <laughs> Thank you. And, and you have played the town courses, yes. Tammy, and, and, and got familiar yes, with them, right. which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've met our parks and rec director, Jerry Lombardo, but he's uh, informally uh, helps to uh, make sure the courses are running perfectly well with the golf pro and the uh, superintendent. Um, but welcome, welcome. And thank you very, very much for your interest in volunteering. Um, so did you ever play with Denise in yeah. softball? You I did. played softball with, against Denise. Oh, you did? Yes. I just had to check that out because I know <laughs> I saw you were very active in the women's softball league, so mm -hmm. I was curious. Um, anyway, welcome to the meeting. Um, uh, so to the public, I'll open it up if there are any questions or comments from the public. 
And you know, if you'd like to offer a few words of uh, the interest, please feel free. I'm happy to, if you'd like to. Um, just kind of looking forward to it, and um, something definitely different for me. So it'll be, it'll be a good thing. Great. Well, we're interested in having you volunteer. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Tammy uh, lives on Oakwood and is an unaffiliated voter. And um, if we approve this, it would be forwarded to the RTM for consideration. Uh, this position would uh, replace uh, the uh, a term that expired. Uh, the former member was Frank Geiger, but his term had expired. And as you know, in the Golf Commission, you can't reappoint. Uh, it's one of those few commissions that you serve a term, and, and then you got to wait for a while. Uh, so, uh, so back to the board. Is there any further question or comment? Absolutely not. Okay. Then, hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Congratulations, almost. We'll forward it to the ITM in August, and uh, Sue will give you the dates of those meetings um, okay. in August. So, okay. And you're more than welcome to stay, but you don't have to for the rest of the meeting. Right? I do have a quick okay. so, so thank you very much. Okay. Uh, item number six is to hear a request from the Public Works uh, uh, Director and the Fiscal Officer. I'll read the re proposed resolution. Uh, resolved to hear, consider, and act upon a request from the Director of Public Works and the Fiscal Officer for a special bond appropriation in the amount of $175,000 for design of the reconstruction of the final phase of Penfield Pavilion. This would be a special bond appropriation to be funded by the 20-year 20 20 year general obligation bonds and the express solution. Maybe if I could just adjust the wording of this resolution and it would be fur and further resolved to approve the special bond appropriation to be funded by the 20-year bonds for the attached bond resolutions. Technically, we're approving the bond resolution as well. It's attached to our packet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let me move this for consideration. And if there's a second to hear the item. Second. Uh, second by Sherry. Uh, we have both Rich White, our Palm Works Director, and Jerry Lombardo, our Parks and Rec Director, with us. Uh, welcome. Let me just preface this for a quick minute, uh, just for the board. Um, I don't. Remember, I don't know if you, if you were on during phase one, but um, the board and the town bodies approved a project about two and a half years ago. Yes. Last year. Uh, so I'd say it's approved about two years ago, two and a half years ago. There was an effort to phase in the reconstruction of Penfield Pavilion. That is, the public knows, it's a pretty, uh, there's a pretty old building, and there had been a lot of erosion of the building, especially the underpinnings of the building. Uh, so phase one was finally approved and we received a state grant for a portion of that reconstruction. And so the easterly third of the pavilion, roughly third, 35% of the pavilion, was totally renovated and rebuilt uh, uh, about a year ago. And I just want to compliment uh, those, the project team that worked on it. Uh, the, I know the community, there's a huge number of positive comments that I'm sure we've all heard. And uh, it's really made a big difference uh, in a lot of ways. But the plan, when that was presented to the town boards, uh, they, the uh, boards in particular, I remember the Board of Finance, asked about a long-term plan for the full pavilion, and Parks and Rec made a commitment to try to, over the next few years, seek to put together a plan for the rest of the reconstruction, dependent upon timing, money availability, grants available. And unfortunately, last year and this year, as you know, with the economy, it's been a really hard time seeking funds from any kind of grant program. Uh, I am trying my best to seek uh, the possibility of some federal funding because one of the area of the federal budget that has gone up in the last two years has been flood and erosion control projects. And Congressman Himes, uh, in particular, has taken an interest in this and actually submitted an appropriation, but it didn't get uh, approved in this 2010 federal budget for a uh, reconstruction project uh, uh, because this building has to adhere to FEMA standards, he felt that it might qualify for the eligibility for projects due to flood control and due to all the FEMA programs that are available. It didn't get approved by the committee that considers that stuff, uh, but he said that it would be under reconsideration in, the next, in this next federal year coming up after October. So I just did want to let the board know we are trying to even if it's a long shot, trying to seek funding outside the town for this, uh, if it were to be, if the design were to, were to move forward. So I just wanted to preface with that introduction. Welcome, Rich and Jerry, and turn it over, over to them. 
No, I'll just give a brief overview of the project. Yeah, guys, if you need to move the cameras, please feel free anytime. This is a, about a three-year-old picture of the, the complex, and as Ken explained, the uh, east side here, which was all the locker rooms, et cetera, were rehabbed and finished uh, and put into place last summer, June. Um, and the project that's before you is to do the design uh, and prepare uh, plans and specifications to do the center portion and what we call the uh, west wing, this area here. Um, just briefly, as a background, the, the, the building itself, the whole complex was built in 1901 as a uh, private beach club, and it's, so it's 108 years old. Um, it survived the storms uh, to date, uh, fortunately, because it does sit on the highest part of the beach, and the water is allowed to go underneath it because it's up on uh, piers. Um, the um, but the, the combination of the age, the, the weather conditions over these years, the expanded use uh, since we took it over in 1978 as a public facility, lack of modernization of uh, the facility has, has taken its toll and it's, we consider it well beyond its uh, useful life. Um, we also need to upgrade it to, to meet the current codes with respect to handicap and being more accessible for the elderly. Uh, FEMA codes, it would be raised a foot so that uh, it meets the current uh, 12 foot elevation. And, and in particular, the current building codes, when this was rebuilt, the current building codes uh, for wind resistance, especially related to shore structures uh, to withstand a hurricane, et cetera, are much more stringent today. Uh, and it's uh, really good stuff. The, the strapping throughout the new building that actually ties very the very top of the building, all the way to the roof, all the way through the walls, the columns, the floor, <coughs> ties right down into the piers. It, it sits on a hundred concrete pier, so it, it can't go anywhere. It'll go, it's, it acts as one structure, so the roof won't blow off in a, in a, a, uh, a storm, et cetera. So it's, that's, that's what would be obviously uh, required in, in the second phase here. Um, as Ken mentioned briefly, in, in 2002, town commissioned a study group to uh, look at rebuilding the pavilion. Um, at that time, the project cost, uh, funding constraints, but more importantly, uh, the response from many people that they wanted to maintain the original character of the building as a, as a, as a traditional beach pavilion um, allowed us to really abandon the plan at that time. We went back in uh, obviously to do this final, this first phase, uh, last year completed in 2008, and that included 7,000 square feet of rebuilding uh, interior space and an additional um, 2,500 square feet of, uh, of uh, deck space. Um, we appropriated some money, $15,000 in June of 2008 um, to go over a, um, to create a, uh, architect, Wiles architect, prepare conceptual drawings for the next phase. And uh, Ken formed a committee that was consisted of parks and rec members, members from the neighborhood and, and staff people. And we worked on it for several months and uh, developed those conceptual plans that uh, Wiles architect will take now and, and develop into the final plan. So um, unless you have any questions on the background information, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to uh, Jerry to explain what the conceptual plans uh, look like. I just want to hand out, uh, if we could share these. These show just typical deterioration in the building, rotting wood, uh, the roof. Um, I could capture there the settlement of the floors and everything, but that's a, a big problem with the existing structure. It's on um, limited number of piers, and uh, the wood underneath has deteriorated, those periods have shifted, so the wood throughout the whole structure, the floor throughout the whole structure is uh, in tough shape, it's, it's very warped and uh, uneven, so. Okay, um, as Richie mentioned, uh, after we got the funding, during the process for the funding on the first, on the first phase of uh, renovations, we had a lot of feedback from uh, all the town bodies 
because we were originally going to be putting lockers in. There was lockers over on this side as well as on this side. And there was a lot of feedback uh, as to um, why are we having lockers only for 120 families, et cetera. Uh, they are well used. They're all used. But we took that, and the feedback that we got was the, from the community that we wanted more deck space, usable for everybody. So in this, um, we tried to keep the similar design. Um, this is the front entrance. Uh, we're still going to have the, the hall, okay, uh, with the out, outside deck. Um, the concession is here. Um, this is where you queue up to go and get your food, so it's uh, overhang and there's more room. Um, then this is all open deck space, okay, with a roof, okay. Um, we did put, because we did get rid of the lockers on this side of the facility, um, we're putting outdoor bathrooms with showers and changing stalls in there so that the beachgoers would have a place to, to go. So we'll have, now we'll have four um, outdoor stations, uh, restroom stations, two on this side and we have two over here. The two on this end of the building do not have showers, um, but we do have outdoor showers and we can just rinse off. We will also have that, but for those that want to come down to the beach or just change or wash their children off, um, they can do it in the ladies and men's room. Uh, when you say outdoor, what do you mean by outdoor? I mean there's no roof? No, no, no. When I say outdoor, Ralph, right now um, we only have two bathrooms right. inside the hall. All the other bathrooms are in the locker wing, and then use the lock. And in order to use the locker bathrooms, you had to be a locker oh, holder. Okay. I got Outside okay. access. So this is access, and these will be open. Okay, and these bathrooms presently are only open from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Uh, when we have staff on, right. okay, uh, these will be open um, probably right up until we drain the pipes in right. late October, early November, right. okay. Um, so when you come down to sit on the deck in November or early October, um, there's, a bathroom. there's a bathroom there. So as well as the two on the outside deck. Uh, we took in, and this will be a handicapped ramp from the parking area. Presently, uh, the only handicap access is through the building. Okay, uh, we were looking to put it on this end of the building at first, but we, economics and funding wasn't available to finish. So uh, we are going to have access for handicap right from the parking lot, right up through to the deck. Um, and I said, here we have just what we had before. We have our uh, lifeguard storage, where we put all our boats and safety equipment, and their office. Uh, as I said, we're adding the bathrooms for out outdoor public access. Um, we did add uh, very similar, it'll be just like over Penfield 2, where you, when you rent the hall, you'll have access to a stove and refrigeration and freezer in this small kitchen, which is accessible for here. Okay. We also presently, um, all deliveries for the concession go through the main hall. So all the grease and everything off the hand trucks goes on the, we put a delivery entrance to the back, okay? This is also gonna serve as uh, an entrance and uh, that way they have a place to put their trash cans and then bring it over to the dumpster rather than going through the building. We're also gonna make this an area for, uh, we have a lot of clam bakes down there and they either do it out here in the driveway or uh, sometimes they set their girl up on front of the beach. We're going to set it up out here where they can do their clam bake. It'll be right next to the kitchen. They'll have water. They'll have everything. Then they can serve right out of their kitchen area for their functions. Um, over here, as you walk in, the locker, the people that have lockers, uh, this will be open. We can close it off. We have access to close it off. So if we have a rental, um, people aren't traipsing through while people are decorating and setting up. Otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to keep it open on certain days and, think, you know, let people, Joe Public go through. Uh, otherwise, you'd come through here and go out this way to the deck. But this will be, because all the lockers are on one side, centrally located, we'll have better control of uh, who goes in. We're going to have, uh, we have restrooms, two restrooms indoors here for the parties. Uh, and 
obviously any public when we're open. And uh, we have offices and things here. We have the office for the uh, director and his staff, and uh, then we have storage throughout. Sure, and that part, just to give us a visual, the, the existing footprint of this middle area of the pavilion is about from where to where, like from east to west? Presently, it's, it's I'm, I'm going to say kind of this area, but then we have an L shape over here. So, so the, the reason I was asking that was the way you're designing for, let's say, a, an average morning on a weekend, there's no functions in there. The public will be able to go through the entire open area the way they do now, but on the east side, there, there'll be a wall with windows um, and then another corridor that they can go through if they wish to on the other side of that. Correct. So it'll kind of all be almost open to the front right. the way it is now. But then, if you wish to in the evening, just describe. If you wish to in the evening, right? If we close it down, we right now, and this may even offer us other revenue sources of renting it differently than we do now, as we do at Penfield too. Um, by doing this, presently we have to close off. We we close the beach at eight. We close when we have a party. We close it at seven. The inside. Um, now the lockers can stay open until 8 because they have this uh, area to get in while the party goer can get in earlier, set up, not worry about kids or anybody trampling through their facility after they've set up their tables and chairs. Um, so it's just going to give us a little bit more flexibility in how we use the facility. Um, to actually enhance public access yes. a little bit. Does that have any like screen porch, I mean screen or anything in the front of it so that, you know, no. dogs and, you know. So the intent is to have an open air, kind of a, a much bigger tech area. Right. We're, we're really just trying to, and if you'll notice, we shortened to keep the cost down. It used to go out to here, Rich? Yes. Okay. That's sure. where it used to go. We shortened it this way, okay? Again, because of cost, to try to keep the cost down. Um, but we've utilized the space a little different. Remember, this was all lockers back here. All we've, the deck itself is in the same um, area. We haven't uh, changed anything with the width of the deck, the length of the deck we have. And what's going to happen is all we did was take the concession, which was here, and we pushed it back. We pushed everything back to the end, so now the front of the deck gets more space, open space. Isn't the concession the purple thing? That's, this? that's it? That's yes. Concession? Okay. Right, but what I'm saying is because this used to be an open hall, uh -huh. this used to be part of the indoor, uh -huh. we slid everything this way. So but the concession used to be here, it's here now, but pushed back. Okay. This was lockers, because these were three rows of lockers, uh -huh. if you recall. See how the, these are all lot these different ropes in here are the locker wings. Um, so you're going to uh, consolidate the roofing so that it's not so many ups and downs. Right. Yeah, we, That's right. good. So it'll be less expensive next time you go to redo it. It will be less expensive this time. Gotcha. And, uh, and on the far right, that's the light bars in the yellow and the I mean right. the yellow and the purple. Yes. There's not a 3D of that view, right? The the new possible view with the tech and the back of the building. Is not a, a visual of what that looks like from the. Not since we've changed it, Ken. We do have one, um, but remember, we, we're making this. Remember, it had the chalet type look. We have changed. We made it simpler. We put the shed roof back on, all the things that we talked about in our last meeting. We haven't spent any with the design. We haven't had them change the original design since. I'm just wondering if somebody on the boards wants to just kind of look at a profile from the beach. We to can get, get a that. sense of what it looks like with the yeah. new decks. Because it is, I mean, one of the things I like about it, when I heard about it, was it really, besides giving you a little more beach space, it gives you a much nicer deck area. Because if people like meeting along the, the, the edge of the deck, but there's very crowded, very little room between where people are selling the snacks and where people are sitting at the tables. So this will give you a lot more room to... This is almost like a pavilion right here, comes out, and then this. This will be open here. 
uncovered. Uncovered. So you have a choice. I mean, we'll have umbrella tables there. And to the far right, where it's gray, is that the uncovered deck? No, we didn't see on that. That's uncovered. uncovered. That's also. just the deck walking in. So you go all the way around, basically right. uncovered, until you get to where the, the um, yeah. All this uh, will be covered. This will be covered. The deck room is. Right. And then it's covered, and then it's uncovered. And then it's covered again, here. And then it's uncovered again to the left of that? This, this yeah. section is covered. That's covered, too. Yeah. So just on the right-hand right side, right. it's uncovered. Just with a new wing, I think. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to get my bearings. This is covered also. So this only is on the far covered. right is uncovered. Right. Okay. And Rich and I were down there, we're thinking of, because it's not getting as much use, that new wing, mm -hmm. as we'd like, because it is direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking of maybe one of those shade covers that you see, or trying to come up with different ideas of how we can uh, bring more shade to it, uh, or even the lattice. We're, we're trying to come up with some ideas. Between um, the rain and how many people want to have that warmth of the sun but not direct rays, it's kind of a nice thing. Right. A lot of covered areas. So, and again, as we move forward, uh, uh, I don't recall what that is, but that's not there anymore. Oh, I know what that is. That's the showers. That's the outdoor showers. The one Foot thing showers, that, things like that. One thing that helps out a lot is Right now, the handicapped and elderly people, when the building's closed, can't get through here or get to the deck. This allows them off-season to get to the whole deck. That's important for them. Well, now you can kind of, can you still go, just because I haven't been there in a while, you can't go through the middle anymore? Like, there used to be a walkway. No, this walkway, this walkway is here. It goes up like this right, right now through the building when right it's open. The middle. Oh, when the building's but, like, if you go there uh, after 8 o'clock tonight or... Wasn't there a hallway that wasn't in the building? There was <laughs> I just want to get a picture of the profile from the street. We're not going to have a second story here anymore. No, it'll be. It'll look just like it. Okay. It'll look just like it's got a second story because we're going with the same height, okay. but it'll all be open inside. So you really have almost like a, a, so a, a barn, a right? Right. It's going to be an open barn ceiling. Right. Okay. I'm thinking of Jennings where it's And the roof right profile. The roof profile, as I look from left to right from uh, Fairfield Beach Road, will be the same level as the current new addition. Yeah. It'll be straight, if we will, straight up. No, oh, the center will still be taller. The okay. center, the center, because this, this. Well, no, I, I meant the two wings. The, the east two wings will be the same. The height. center part, I know, is going to be taller, right. but it's not going to be any higher than the, the existing east wing. No. No. Okay. Yeah. And it should be the same proportion, and it will, and it'll be higher. Yeah, it'll match what's over here. Yeah, because we have to raise these pilings. Thank you. But for people walking through, it'll almost have a, a cathedral look. I mean, it'll feel much more open, right, to the pu public. You know, because right now there's that little apartment above that's gonna. Right. If you take a look at that picture up. there with the uh, existing dance floor, it's pretty humble with the low ceiling right. and the yep. white. So. It's, it's so okay. the poles are, are the poles still gonna be in there? No. No. And our, the use is going to be pretty much the same seasonal use that we have for Penfield too, right? Yes. Okay. And what we're trying to do we one thing. Do we need poles for the roof? Maybe a steel column or something. Steel beams. No, they can open up the, the space in the middle there. Okay. That's good. Um, what we're going to do is, and by opening it up and putting ceiling fans and things of that nature in, it'll be cooler the tofu because it, it can get quite stuffy and warm in there, even though you're on the water, people think, oh, sea breeze. It doesn't breeze every night. <laughs> How about landscaping? Is it changing? Um, no, we got the dune right here. The dune isn't going to be changing. Um, obviously, we'll be adding some, uh, if need be. Mm -hmm. um, then the parking will be, uh, you know, staying the same, just fixing it up. The square footage of the whole building is slightly less would exist there. The existing building itself uh, goes from 11,000 square feet to 7,000 and change. Where you pick it up is a lot more deck, almost 50% more deck, but the overall footprint is still slightly less than what's there. One, and like I said, one thing, with, uh, uh, go back to the locker issue. Um, we wanted, we were originally going to keep the lockers, but we have 120 lockers over here. Um, we couldn't put 120 lockers back in because of the new code. 
they have to be so wide, the aisles and everything have to be bigger. Um, the most I think we could do that was like 70 lockers in there. So the commission in doing it and hearing from the public that we wanted more outdoor, you know, more public space made that decision um, not to put more lockers in there. Plus the cost factor was over to just do the 70 lockers would have been about close to a half a million dollars, 400,000 400, plus. Uh, our payback on that would have been about 40 years just on the lockers. So we think that the, we did a prudent job of financially doing it. There were a lot of our TAM members that were very into um, more community-wide access, like tech space, and less access for you know small numbers of people. So this seems to so Parks and Rec has reviewed this the commission. Yes, uh, they well they reviewed it um, a while back. It's a concept. Last last uh, month they conceptually gave us permission to come before you before we go to the Board of Finance. This month they'll be voting on it officially, but they, they're the ones that designed it. They had members on it. They saw the, uh, Wiles did a uh, dog and pony show before them uh, several months ago. Great, I'm glad you finally looked at getting to finish it. Yeah, our goal is, I mean, provided everything falls into place, um, what we want to do is uh, obviously get the money approved uh, this September for the design. Uh, then uh, I think we figured five to six months of design work, then a couple months of bidding. We want to come before you with a real price, uh, a bid price uh, in that so that uh, you know we're not always saying, oh, we can't do this, can't do that. Let's come in with a real price. This is what it's going to cost. Uh, then it's easier if we have to cut, make cuts from the real price. To get it down to where we feel it's affordable, and uh, if that's if everything worked out, we would like to start construction uh, in September of 10 um, and to have it ready for probably July you know, of 11. Um, I want to say Memorial Day of 11, but, but uh, we learned from the last time, you know, weather and everything else, you run into little obstacles, so. But that would be our goal, ideally. Um, and again, it depends on how everything works out. And just, I guess, for full disclosure, a guesstimate is, is approximate range. I think we figured two point five, two two million one to two million five. So two million two million one. Um, two million one to two million four. Okay. And a lot of that risk, because I know people would say, well, gosh, you know, it's ten thousand square feet, but. I want to take two minutes to describe how much of it is the, the foundation and the pilings, and because I understand from the first phase that was like a huge amount of the cost, right. it was because of the beach. Right, there's over a couple hundred thousand tied up in that. The um, you can't drive traditional piles into the sand there because there's a layer of peat which prevents you from doing that. So the solution that we came up with last time with a geotech engineer was to spread the load out with individual uh, concrete piers that have a, a foot on them that's like about four feet by four feet and then the pier comes up and on the uh, east side there was 101 to support that so it's quite a lot of work but they they serve two purposes they definitely support the load but they also provide the anchor to prevent the building from floating away because it's all tied into that system so it's meant to stay there but that Project to get support is hard, but I think this is a, such a heavily used town facility, and we haven't done since the library any town structure of significance. So, you know, if it's phased in right, I'm hoping we could consider getting part of it through a grant. But I think giving them the opportunity to have it considered for funding, you know, next year, um, depending on the grant situation, it's it's at least worth exploring. You know, I was hoping there was a way to phase it more, but I think. They, they make a compelling case for doing the rest all at once. Because it sounds like to do it, to break it up would be more expensive potentially. It is what we, are, if you recall, our original intent was to have phase two or phase two and phase three. 
um, after we did this phase, phase one, um, and this is like a separate building, the way Richie has it designed, it's a separate standalone building. Um, it creates a lot, you got to put firewalls up. It, it's just adding more cost and then uh, setting up, you know, getting a contractor in. It, we, we could have saved a little bit more by doing it all at once, but um, I think doing this portion and everything ties in to one phase, the kitchens. Uh, so all the electrical, those are things we really didn't think out last time. I thought one of the questions you know, I'm asking that just popped in my head that I didn't ask in advance, but I'm just not sure. Do you know if there are any other permits in mean, the TPZ? There are other boards that would have to approve this, or because it's an existing, it's, it's a rebuild of an existing building? So the only thing sure. we did last year, the last time, was uh, submit a coastal area management plan to TPZ and go through the TPZ process for the approval of that as well on the existing footprint. And no so because you're not DEP. expanding, you're not bringing no. filling and stuff like that? There's no, no other DEP or any other permits involved. Okay, that, that sounds good. <laughs> the other thing about having the design and having getting the design done, that should the stimulus money come through or anything like that that the government's talking about, plan ready, we should be, we'll be ahead of the game. And uh, just to the board, um, just to the public too, but I do want to commend Rich and Bill Hurley on something that didn't come up, but it really uh, made this a lot easier to consider. There was a FEMA uh, recalibration of the whole beach area and FEMA standards, and at one point during that deliberation, FEMA was telling us that any structure on the beach would have to be raised 17 feet, which would theoretically mean a four-story, a, a four-foot crazy configuration at the base of this pavilion and really affect the structure and the height of the whole pavilion. And Bill Hurley and Rich led an effort to petition for a waiver or for a, I don't know what the wording was, but they got, they got approval to have this structure under the FEMA regulations with the 12-foot standard which really would helps us keep that roof line the way Ralph was hoping. So what actually, yeah, yeah, what they did was they actually went back and took a look at their calculations and agreed that, what our opinion, that this is on a high spot, and they actually carved out an area that allows this to be a 12, but Jennings will go up to 17 uh, in other areas, but they really bought into the argument that this is on a high spot already. knock on wood, the design will last a long, long time. It is amazing, by the way, to me, this whole pavilion lasted through the hurricane of 39, and, and whoever designed it back 100 years ago must have uh, <laughs> had, a lot, had a lot of ingenuity. Well, one thing they did was they, they had spacing in the floorboards so the water actually slushed up. They never tried to raise the building up. It's kind of very... You know, Are we trying to mirror, that, mirror that misdesign? Are we trying to do something uh, we can't. We, in the locker room, we still had that, but you have to have a, a solid floor in the uh, existing building. But there's new things in the code where you have to have openings that allow the water to come in and relieve the pressure on the floor. So but the deck would have slats. Yeah, we'll do that in this according to the current code, but they did it intuitively huh. back then just by leaving spacing on the boards, either by accident or by design, that allowed the water to come up and relieve the pressure on the building. Must have been a jazz. And then over the years, there's enough holes in the building that water goes through. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a little time, and it'll, it'll be uh, like a switch key. Uh, further questions from the board? Yeah, we do want to talk about the financing. Do you want to do oh, it separately, you, Paul? Or? Is there anything you, you, you could envision as part of the, like a building project, part of the rest of the project, so that's why you're proposing the bonding? It's, it's just going to be a regular standard bond for the capital project. Nothing. Pretty important to develop from that standpoint. Okay. But it would, it would be rolled into the rest of it. Right. It would be, it'd be, you know, on the assumption that that group will be bond next summer. Obviously, there'd have to be an appropriation again beyond this towards the other stuff. That Toward the construction. If there were any grants, the, the, some of those school things would be reduced by those amounts. Okay. Uh, from the public, I'll ask if there are any questions or comments. Um, hearing none. I'm impressed. Thanks.
able to say I see presentations by you guys really did your homework. You really thought this out. I really commend the two of you and the committee. Does that mean you can use the beach more? Yes. Better? <laughs> by the way, record uh, amazing crowds this year. I mean, the beach facilities have been really in demand this year, and it's really been a, a, an effort to, to maintain and have the lifeguards do everything they do. And, Thank goodness it's going great, but it's been, been a busy beach season, so that's why I think advancing this forward to the next stage, even though it's hard in this economic time, I think if the community owes the opportunity to, to hear this and have it presented. I was a little nervous about the timing, but I think it's a priority. Yeah, I think from a maintenance point of view, it's very difficult for us to put any more money into it because whatever you do yes. doesn't tie into yes. anything that's solid. Okay, then back to the board. Are we ready? We have a motion. We've had a motion to move in the second. Right. Yes. All the motions. So I'm uh, happy to vote on approving this item to uh, expend $175,000 toward the uh, full design and reconstruction of the rest of Penfield Pavilion uh, through this 20 year bond issue and to approve the attached bond resolution and recommend this to the Board of Finance. Aye. All, Aye. all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, carries the item. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you. Good job. Uh, to the board, is there any further new, any new business to the board? Okay. Oh, wait, one sure. thing. Yes. I just, uh, this is, um, I spoke to somebody today. Um, sound Tigers, Bridgeport Sound Tigers, have a military appreciation day. And um, they're looking for sponsors to buy tickets for family, family members of deployed military. So if anybody's interested in contributing towards tickets for family members of deployed military for the Sound Tigers games, um, they can go on to www.soundtigers.com or they can call Dan Travis at 203-334-4625. Thank you. The only I have just a minor, minor new business item. I, I got an email yesterday from um, the Fairfield List Building Committee Chairman. Yeah. Uh, they, they are asking to come to us at our next meeting in, in September for initial funding um, for their hiring an architect and to August or September? Well, I, I thought I would put it on in two weeks okay. Okay. so that Good. it can okay. get to the Board of Finance in September if we if we approve it, but I just want to let you know that they, they are at the point where they're asking for initial, an initial request to allow them to do some work and, and to go through that uh, hope to keep the project going. Yep. Keep the going. project. <laughs> um, okay then, uh, here, if I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Selectman Bowley, seconded by Selectman Senek. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's good to have the full board back again. Uh, thank you. Nice um, to be back. Mark meeting adjourned. Good job. Yeah. That looks great. It makes you want to go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah.